This is the last lap of the brake modifications, and here's some video of running in finer weather. You can see I'm having to assist my stopping with my feet with the old brake rig. Shot by my buddy Dennis Brown, we're pulling up a 1 in 20, stiffening to a 1 in 18 at the top. It's a bit different today, but a good time to be at the bench. Here's the brake rig, all ready, made up, riveted together. It's now ready to be assembled into the bogey, and I'll show you how that's done. Looks pretty crazy, sort of a conglomeration, a bit like a spider. So let's put it into the bogey. First of all, put the first side frame on, making sure that the bearings are the right way around. Put the cross beam in. And then assemble the first brake beam. That's one side assembled. Now I'll do the other side. It's always a little difficult because this side can push the other side out. And I'm working over the top of the camera. Very nice. Okay, that's gone together pretty nicely. It's not fought back quite as much as sometimes, making sure the brakes are all in the right place. Got a spring there, that's a return spring. Now I'm using this piece to go, the plank to go across here. Before I was using a thinner piece which was from, which is originally from this bogey. Um, but I'm using this from one of the other bogeys, I've swapped them over. And the reason for that is because it's got screw holes in it, a mounting position for the speedo and uh, myelometer. It just makes it easier because this is going to go in the place of the bogey that had the speedo on it. That's the way it goes. There we go. Just got it over that little hump there. Make sure they're nice and free to move. Yep. Bogey's got a twist in it. Now I'll attach this up here. It's just a small 6BA screw. Goes in there. It's not too tight, but tight enough. Making sure Brakes are working smoothly. Okay. And then the final piece of the jigsaw puzzle is putting the spring in. And that hooks in underneath. Okay, got the spring on. That's working well. It's quite a strong spring. You see it here. But it does bring those brake blocks off the wheels. What I need to do now is oil round and that's all these little joints and bearings here, little pins and stuff. But particularly I have to remember to oil the oil light bearings here on the free wheel. If you remember I've got a free wheel here for going around the curves. One rotates and the other one doesn't. One's fixed to the axle, the other one's on a bearing here. And I've tightened these up a little bit so that they don't rotate as freely as they did because they were getting a little loose and this is on oil light bearings which aren't uh, great bearings they tend to wear out quite quickly under these circumstances and that's because um, the rotational speed isn't very high and oil light bearings seem to work better when it's very high rotational speeds then the bearings on the needle roller bearings they get oiled with this device which is a, a pump grease gun it just has a conical end on it there you can buy them on eBay. I have these pieces of shim which cover the holes and I have a grease hole there which I can pump grease into the needle roller bearings and I do that every season. It keeps the bearings in very good condition and this little piece of shim with a dimple in it um, keeps the dirt out. So I'll give that a good grease up and then we'll put it onto the trolley.
Oh, and one final and vital piece is this, which is a magnet. And this magnet goes on to, just fits onto the axle there, you see. Just uses its own magnetism on the end of the axle there, and that sends the pulse to the cyclometer uh, to give me the mileage and the speed at which the thing's going at. And I'll show you that in a, when I'm putting the thing all back together. Okay, the first bogey's on. Let's get the second one on. This is always a great moment. Here we go. There we go. Now I've got my hand protection gloves on. I can uh, start screwing this up. Yeah, that's going on great. Most of this rigging was bought from the hardware store, including this buttle here, which is a way of adjusting the brakes. They're a bit tight now. Well, I think they are anyway. So I'm going to loosen this off, which is a really easy way of adjusting the, the tension on the brakes. brakes out, tighten it back up. Now the final piece of the jigsaw is the sensor for the cyclometer, the meter that measures the miles and the um, speed. And that fits over the back of the axle. You see my magnet there, remember I talked about that earlier. Fits over the back of the axle and is screwed in to this cross member by two small screws. You know what, I'll do this without my gloves on. It's so getting away when you put your small screws in. Got to kind of feel my way into the holes because I can't see them. So that's the sensor in, the wire leading away to the actual device on the other end and the magnet goes past the sensor, glides past the sensor and gives me the mileage and the speed. And here's the front. And the compensation between the front and the rear bogey. And there the brakes pull in. So that's great, that's all done. Job complete. All I have to do now is take it out on the rails. I'll wait for the snow to go before I can test them.